Today we're going to try a flight with the Mighty Ford Tri-Motor, which is a new addition by Microsoft Flight Sim. And this aircraft, uh, on June the 11th, 1926, the Ford Tri-Motor made its first flight. Now you can see right off the bat, starting up here, it's just kind of wandering around, which some of the other aircraft don't do. They normally just come up and taxi onto the runway and stop. But this one's running around a little bit. So right off the bat, I figured, oh, maybe there's something a little amiss with this plane. But uh, let's just take a flight with it and see. The plane produced by the Ford Motor Company and designed by William Bushel Stout revolutionized air transportation around the world, actually. Uh, the Tri-Motor, one of the first all-metal planes, was the first plane built to carry passengers rather than mail. And the original 4AT model seated eight passengers, later increased to 12 and then 13 passengers. The plane had three engines, which allowed it to fly higher and faster than other airplanes of the same period, and it could reach speeds of up to 150 miles per hour. So it was affectionately known as the Tin Goose or the Flying Washboard. So it's got a corrugated exterior and also Ford had what was known as the Model T car, the Tin Lizzie. So maybe it got its name from that, but Larry Jandoff says the name it got was because it waddled down the runway like a goose and had three loud engines that kind of sounded like a goose honking. <laughs> it closed its airplane division in 1933 because of poor sales during the Great Depression. So the plane looks like it's been well rendered. It's very authentic looking. If you Google and look up the plane, uh, you can see they've done a really nice job of uh, rendering this aircraft at Microsoft Flight Sim. It's really tricky to fly uh, just manually. Um, you know, you, you're going to struggle probably. You have to keep your airspeed spe accurate even if you're on autopilot. Uh, an interesting uh, fact is that on July the 2nd, 1932, Franklin D. Roosevelt became the first U.S. presidential candidate when, to fly when he chartered a Ford Tri-Motor. And he flew from Albany to Chicago to address the uh, Democratic Convention. So a lot of airlines used this aircraft in the early days of... Uh, you know, passenger aircraft uh, industry, um, American Airlines, Grand Canyon Airlines, and Pan American World, Star Air Service, so some of those names, Transworld, you know, in United Airlines, uh, were pioneers, and this plane broke a lot of records uh, because it was a kind of a new aircraft. It could land safely on one of these engines, so it achieved a uh, really good uh, reputation for reliability. So let's give uh, a try flying this thing. So I'm going to click ready to fly. It wandered around and finally stopped on the runway for me. So I created a flight plan using a little nav map. So let's just take a look at that. We're going to fly from Buttonville, Toronto uh, Airport. Right here, Municipal Airport. So what you do is you just right click this is a little nav map it's a free uh, software you can download and you need to connect uh, to Microsoft Flight Sim by selecting that and say oh connect and uh, update your cache files like they suggest under options so like go to your cache files and, and get uh, this zip file downloaded create a directory and then select that and use this button here so you can use offline globe elevation data. So that's what they're recommending. So you right click there, you can select that as an airport. You can go up here and select your runway. You can see here I selected runway 21. So it's just a matter of clicking here and selecting your runway and saying OK. So there's the departure for that runway which was given and then it'll automatically connect you to Toronto Airport if you go over to Toronto and right click on Toronto. Now I'm going to take this centering uh, bug off right now button here just just so it doesn't uh, 
Uh, these aircraft are showing up because I have that selected. All right, so you right click on the Toronto Airport and you can select that as your destination. And then you can also um, hover over here and see what runway they suggest. So there, there's the preferred runways right now. So that's going to change. So one of them is uh, runway, uh, it depends on the weather. So runway 15 right, 15 right. I'll, I selected that one right here. So you just go up here and select 115 right, right there, and say OK. And you've got that. Now for the little nav map is going to connect these two. You're going to see a straight line going. And so I've done some other videos using little nav map. So you're going to see it's direct. But you can actually drag this line and move it to these waypoints. Or you can right click on this waypoint and say add. So you can add that waypoint. So that's how you get these different waypoints. So I just picked a nice curving route in to this runway. So the runway frequency is 110.95 MHz. So write that down. You'd need that. All right, so with this flight plan, uh, you just hit save here and it'll save the, the, the flight plan. And then to export that to Microsoft Flight Sim, you're just gonna go export this flight plan. And it's gonna ask you if you want to start position. That's a gate position, but I didn't pick that. I just said save. So um, you're gonna be asked if you want to overwrite. So I've already got it in there. So I'm not going to overwrite. I'm just going to cancel for now. I've already got it up here. So that's how you get your flight plan into Microsoft Flight Sim. So now that should be imported into this aircraft. So I'm just going to close that down. And we can reference this as we're flying if we want. So you just click like that. It downsizes. Now let's go back to the aircraft. So. Um, I've gone through um, a number of the checklists uh, so if you wanted to start at the gate you're going to have to go through a pretty extensive uh, checklist uh, for example I'll just close that and open this up again you go there to get your checklist so I've gone through these checklists so for takeoff I'm just going to click on here these are the things you would do And now I'm just going to close that down and go inside the aircraft and take a look and uh, show you what we've got here. So if I press Control 1, I end up getting here. And uh, you can see 11050 uh, is the active nav frequency. So if you want to change that, right here you, you can change your standby. So I'm going to change that to 95. And then this this knob here will change the other one. These numbers. So now there's that standby frequency. Now here's your swap. Boom. Okay, so we've got that swap. Now there are some different layouts you can get for your instrument panel. So let's just... Uh, one of the things I have found is... Uh, I press control one control two control three I think you know you get different uh, views if I press control one I get that control two I get here and I'm just going to back off and see this little knob there that'll change your panel so there is the panel I prefer to use because I can use the autopilot if I can get it working now this one here uses a autopilot a gyroscope uh, but it's very, you know, there's steps you have to go through to get this working. And I'm not sure it's actually working right. So what I, I'm going to do is just use the, there's the standard one if you want to try and fly. But like I said, the plane is tricky to fly. So I'm going to use this one. And uh, it's a little tricky actually getting the view over here so you can see things nicely. You know, that's not bad, but... Um, I'm just going to press control one again and when I do that 
it jumps to the side door panel or whatever that is and, but at least then when I swing around with my mouse I can see things alright so this is on which is a good thing uh, if you do the start up right from scratch at a gate I'm not sure I tried it once at, already and this did not come alive I couldn't get the autopilot system to light up so let's look at this uh, nav system we have here um, you want it on GPS so that's how you change it and then you see I when I set the um, frequency uh, uh, and that first scene that I did there, sequence, uh, it got transferred over to here. So there's the active um, frequency. We have it on GPS. Now about this, this is to turn your autopilot on and off. So I'm going to turn those on now. And I'm getting this message, which isn't really good. Uh, maybe because we're not up in the air. And our altitude I'm going to set to 3000 so this knob will do in hundreds and then we've got arm and up down for vertical speed so it would be up and I'm going to set it for 500 so it's on autopilot and nav now so I've got that uh, ROL off so it looks like it's recognizing the flight plan okay so uh, lights here uh, landing lights on that that's stuff you're going to go through when you do the checklist cabin lights we can turn on so you know I'm not going to go through all these instruments uh, I recommend that like for example your engine primer uh, your fuel primer pump and your throttles, um, your magnetos. Here we have our fuel mixture. This is our that's a water rudder. If you happen to have uh, you know the the skids on for floats, etc. This is your uh, parking brake. So you can go through all that. Uh, you know this is um, your yoke. So you can go through all that in the startups if you want uh, by doing the checklist. It'll familiarize you with that. So you get your, your your standard instruments here, your compasses, and we'll see if this thing's going to work okay. So with that flight pan, it's now imported. It loaded in nicely. Just going to go back here and now once again I can maybe take a look at this and zoom in a bit okay so um, there's flight plan there so so it loaded that flight plan so that's a good thing alrighty let's um, back off here I'm going to go like this and push on the top of my joystick so I'm using the Logitech Extreme 3D Pro joystick with some buttons programmed in um, you get this view out the side window which I really like and then if I hit it again I that little button on the top of my joystick now I want to mention something about this aircraft it's a I'll just go outside and look at it you see it's a tail dragger so if you put your brakes on when you land or taxing and you hit them hard this thing like most uh, trail draggers will tip down in the front you'll transfer the weight to the front and the propeller will hit and it'll shut you down so your your flight will land right there so also if you get into this zone right here it's going to fail the aircraft and you're going to have to start all over so we're ready to go I am going to see if I can get that um, autopilot working with that panel that we chose so let's just go inside and see if we got that parking brake on There it is there. So I'm going to release it. Starting to roll. Okay, well, let's take off. So we're going to want to fly uh, 
maybe a hundred knots and when we're landing we're going to want to be around 75 knots so this thing is pulling to the left right now there's one to tip over so you can see it's a little bit tricky to fly if you don't have the autopilot on so what I'm going to do right now I'm just going to hit pause so I can go inside and take a look at what we've got here Okay, I've just pressed control one on my keyboard. So let's see if we have the autopilot on here. It's on. The nav's on. Approach is off. Vertical speed. So we should up 500. Okay, that's what I'm going to select. So I got the vertical speed because I had to hit that arm button to get that on. When it hits uh, 3,000 feet, it should the altitude should hold. So let's just just release this and see what happens with the plane. So right now it looks like it's turning to follow the flight plan, and you can see the vertical speed is going up. So right now it's working okay. Now watch your speed. Like I said. Um, 90 knots isn't bad, 100 not bad. So it just turned again to follow the flight plan, so so far so good. It's a cloudy, rainy day here in the Toronto area. So we're flying into Toronto International Airport. And we're going to see if we can do an ILS landing. So. I'm going to caution you to keep a close eye on your airspeed right here that needle so I have the heads up display turned on you can see it's following the flight plan well, let's go to the little nav map you can see I'll, I'll center the aircraft on the little nav map so there we are it looks like it's struggling a little bit to find the uh, the flight plan but we're going to give it a chance to try. Now the wind is uh, 18 knots blowing that way. So blowing north. So I'm not sure if that's causing the plane to have some issues. We're going to see what happens here. The big thing will, will it turn when it gets to here? If it does we'll know the uh, autopilot seems to be working okay. So the plane is, uh, like I said, a little bit of a handful to try and fly manually. So it's turning. Just watch that airspeed anyway. You don't, you don't want to be getting over, uh, I'd say stick to around 100 knots. Okay, so what I'm going to do is uh, just close this down for a second. Just by clicking here, um, this this uh, window here, the little nav map is controlling my keyboard and my mouse. So to get it back here, I just click on the Microsoft Flight window, and uh, now I'm back. So I think the wind uh, is creating a bit of an issue. Um, you can see that uh, I have the heads-up display turned on for outside, so I can see if it's following the flight plan. And once again, I can see my airspeed here. See, it was dropping. So I'm going to try and increase the throttle. So I'm hoping I can get to Toronto with this thing. But, I mean, this thing was considered to be very reliable. Probably because the pilots were really good at flying these planes back in the day. Guys like Charles Lindbergh. So we're at 3,000 feet, so that's that's holding, so that's good. And you can see our vertical speed now is holding, and our trim is okay. The autopilot's controlling the trim, so I'm not going to mess with the trim. I'm just going to try those views again. There's the one I really like, uh, especially when you're landing. You can uh, so I'm just getting that by pushing my my button on top of my joystick. Well, that's really cool. Now let's just take a look at this plane and see how nicely it's rendered. 
Okay, th I don't know if this is the 13 seater. Remember they started out with plus seats and then went to 12 and then 13. But this thing is just beautifully rendered. Um, I'll give them credit for that. I know there's some bugs in this plane uh, if you're flying it just uh, without using this uh, panel with the Garmin system in it. But uh, the, the exhaust, the gauges, um, like there's little gauges on here to check your your pressures, your oil temperature, etc. Your RPMs, same thing on this one. And then you've got your exhaust beautifully rendered here underneath. That's cool. And what do they got on it for markings? VH uh, USX. Now there's, there's still some of these planes around and people uh, pay for uh, flights at air shows to take a ride in one of these things. But I mean, you know, it looks a little scary to get into, but uh, apparently it worked really well. There's the Ford name on the back. Show you from the top. So, the Tin Goose. Following the flight plan nicely. And it's windy. Let's just take a look at little nav map. Yeah, it's 18 to 20 knots blowing in the north. And you can see we're tracking there, but that's our actual heading. Well, that's our heading, and that's what we're actually tracking in that direction there. Yeah, so the plane is, a, the autopilot is doing a great job of keeping the plane on course while dealing with the wind. So a windy day in Toronto. Oh yeah, the wheels are really cool too. Yeah, they just like old-fashioned wheels, you know, really, really neat. The old basic tread pattern. Oh, spoked wheels. Yeah, little fenders over them. Uh, looks like shocks here, I guess. Yeah, old Henry did a pretty good job. Or actually the guy that he got to design it. Yeah, the engineers did a great job doing this plane. Yeah, this stuff's not operable. How do the passengers get in and out? Oh, I guess this is a door here. Now, let's see what we can see inside. Control 1, Control 2, Control 3 on my joystick. Brings up that engine. Nice view. See, there's those gauges temperature oil and rpms so you during if you do the checklist you'll be asked to check these to make sure they're okay control four the other engine with its gauges and then here's the seat uh passengers oh here's the door to get in <laughs> that's cool what do we got here Yeah, okay. Is that telling them the airspeed and stuff? Looks like this says airspeed, but I'm not sure. It's a little hard to read. But I'm just going to turn around and back here. So a lot of the planes you can't get back inside, but this one you can. Get a good look at what it looked like. Yeah, really beautifully done. Nice job, Mike. Oh, there's the lights for the passengers. So, nice wood uh, details. So, control 5, is that control 5? Control 6, control 7, control 8, control 9 on my keyboard. We're back here. So, that's control 9. But I'm, I'm getting that as well just by using my button on top. So, everything's looking good. I'm just going to uh, check the flight plan. Once again, when I hit Control-1, like I say, it goes to the side of the co-pilot seat. But then you can scroll back. That's the only way I can figure out how to get over here. So, there's the waypoint we're headed for, apparently. 
yeah there it's showing up right there so once we get to this waypoint it should switch the next one that I entered when I on little nav map when I created the flight plan so the autopilot's on uh, nav is on the approach is off um, back course is off the altitude is holding now and arm is off for you know up and down vertical speed so when I get closer I'm going to have to hit the button right here to change this from GPS to uh, local LOC VLOC so that'll switch it when I hit it but I don't want to hit it right now that's that's to try and pick up the frequency that we have active here so um, this is your nav swap button that's nav one volume and uh, trans standby frequency transceiver standby frequency so you can actually use this to set this frequency as well I'm not going to mess with it right now but once you, uh, you you set this frequency you're going to hit a nav swap and it'll go up here and become active com1 com1 frequency so you're going to set your frequencies using these buttons that's going to change this stuff nav1 volume uh, yeah okay I don't think uh, we need to turn that on that might be to pick up the frequency there so here we have uh, some other buttons there's our flight plan one our VNAV page procedures this you can get your menu this will fly you direct to one of these waypoints if you click on it and uh, hit enter you can activate to a waypoint okay so some standard gauges here to look at we got our temperature RPMs and our pressure our oil pressure so everything's looking okay I'm just going to check the uh, check our airspeed and see how we're doing right there yeah, that's a good spot to be and I'm just adjusting that with my joystick uh, the throttle these throttles you could use them but I, I'm using my joystick to do it there's a compass working nicely and I think that one uh, let's, let's just go here and yeah this one's also working so you know a lot of the stuff is working just fine and our altitude gauge so we are flying west so that that's working that's real cool too the way it looks some of this stuff um, is not operable whenever you light up something blue you know you can actually do something with it so let's just see where we are here I'm just going to go back here and okay so we're headed for the next waypoint now and as you can hear it's pretty darn windy there's a beautiful countryside just east and north of Toronto well actually we're north of Toronto not really east of it right now we're east of the airport and north of the airport so we're, we're following our flight plan really well okay time to turn so let's see where we are we might be getting close here I've been doing a lot of talking yeah we're turning towards the uh, airport now so all's well so far I just gotta watch that airspeed I know that so when I get around here I should be able to hit um, 
to switch to VLOC the localizer and try and pick it up when we start descending I'm going to try and use the approach hold and when we start descending I'm going to have to watch the airspeed and I'm just going to leave it on autopilot to land just to see how well it works yeah I just zoomed in and zoomed out on that so you gotta get that nav window off to use your mouse otherwise it's connected to a little nav map okay so my speeds dropping a bit there because we, we turned into the wind now so we're flying into a wind of a gusting maybe higher but it's about 20 knots so it's going to slow us down so that's where i have to keep my so for for landing i'm going to try and get it right here around 75 knots so i'm going to have to uh, constantly adjust uh, my power to compensate for the wind so just I just don't really want to get over a hundred that's basically what I'm saying okay so let's go back inside and look at what we've got here We're getting really close here, so I'm going to bring up a little nav map, see where we're at. Okay, so as soon as I get to here, I am going to change over to see if I can pick up the localizer. And I hope it, it, it shows. Uh, what's my airspeed? It's good. Okay, so we're turning. Okay, so I'll, it's it's really working well right now. So let me just see if I can pick up the localizer. Okay, so it picked it up and it's it switched over to LOC1 and it's tracking perfectly. So now what I need to do, I'm just going to look at the airport. It's a little ways off, but I'm going to hit approach soon. So um, what I'm trying to do here is maintain my speed and then as we get closer I want to do that. I want to get it down to around 75. Now hopefully I can land this thing and not nose plant it. If I do well I think I'll just post it. Post it anyway. So I notice some people have been having issues flying the aircraft, but uh, it, it is working, so th this is the free um, one that was offered before the end of June that you could download. So it's not upgraded in any way. Okay, I'm going to go inside and see if I can hit the uh, the approach and see what happens. So I just turned approach on, showing up here, showing autopilot. So it should pick up the glide slope and start descending. Okay, so when I did that, it actually adjusted try and line up with the runway and it should start descending we should see the vertical speed start to go down and also this dropping so the runways over here somewhere I believe so I'm gonna watch this airspeed now when we start descending okay we're descending now so it's picked up the glide slope Okay, so, nice view there, let's go back, 
just going to try and reduce my airspeed here because we're descending. I want to try and get it between 70 and 80. We're lined up pretty good here with the runway. So that looks like Woodvine Racetrack down there. Okay, the airspeed's pretty good here right now. So the autopilot's doing a pretty good job of flying this plane. Yeah, Microsoft's rendered these subdivisions very nicely around the Toronto Airport. Looks really good. There's our runway right there. I don't want it to get below 70. Now, uh, the wind, let's see where the wind's coming from here. Yeah, okay, it's blowing across a little bit, so you can see the autopilot trying to adjust for that until we get close and then it'll probably straighten out but it's doing a great job really the programming of this system I'm just gonna have to speed up a little bit we're getting a little slow here airspeed uh, 75 is great if you can manage that So I gotta say I, I do really like this plane. It's uh, it's a beautiful addition and uh, part of history, really. One of the first, if not the first, passenger plane ever. They used to fly it from uh, first used to do mail from uh, Key West, Florida to uh, Havana, Cuba, and then they started taking passengers. So we are coming in at just the right speed. I'm just going to close down little nav map for now. Get get you a better view. And we're 1400 feet. I'm just going to hit B on the keyboard for barometric pressure. Yeah, so it wasn't really showing the correct altitude there. So B on your keyboard will always hit that before you land just to make sure. I could have even hit it a little bit earlier. So I'm going to reduce my speed. Here's a beautiful view for you. Reduce speed again. It looks like we're not lined up, but once you get here, you can tell we're pretty good. So, uh, I'm going to try and keep it. Uh, I don't want it to get to 60, but I'm going to cut back and to idle shortly. Okay, so like I said, do not brake hard. I'm putting it back to idle now. You want that uh, tail to drop. Let's just see where we are here. We've got lots of runway, so just let it die down a bit. See if we can get that tail to drop. Just steer it one way or the other. She does tend to waddle. Yeah, I can look out here. So, 
like I said, do not break hard. Uh, just try and uh, cut back on your throttle to get it to uh, touch down on the tail. But that was actually a pretty good landing. Let's just bring up the little nav map and see where we are here on the airport. I'm just going to zoom in. Okay, so here we are. I don't know if we can get a gate, but I should be able to turn uh, right here. Uh, I don't know, that, that's not really the spot right there, but I'll turn at the next one. Maybe that one didn't show up on the little nav map. I don't have the uh, air traffic control turned on, as you notice, because, uh, you know, they might be trying to get us to go up and down and different altitudes and change our runway or something, so I just left it uh, the way we did the flight plan. Okay, see if I can follow this taxi way here. Okay, yeah, I was a little bit over too far. Right in here. Now, when I get up here and stop, they should give us a gate. If not, I could always ask for one. So, inside uh, the aircraft, uh, you really can't see very well. So, now I gotta be really careful here, putting on the brakes very gently. I don't want to tip forward. See what I mean? See how that tipped right there? And I was hardly touching the brakes. So, let's see if we can get a uh, gate. Gate 70. Okay. Let's go to Gate 70. I'll bring up a little nav map so you can see where we're going to. Just zoom in a bit. Gate 70. Not sure. Over here somewhere, probably. There's the lower numbers. Yeah, be in this area somewhere. Okay, let's see if we can uh, get there. Let's see if we can zoom in a bit so you can see a little better. It makes it easier to follow their instructions when you have all these, uh, you know, um, taxiways like Taxiway Foxtrot showing up here, like some of the other aircraft. So there we are, parked, and we can shut this thing down probably. Let me just go and do that with the checklist. Maybe there's a shutdown. Let me just close that. And uh, after landing. Okay, so I'm going to go through this. Must be for passing your door closed. I wonder if you can open and close that. Unlock. Okay, so it's unlocked. Unlocked. Uh, I don't know if uh, I'm just going to go outside. See if that passenger door is open. Oh yeah, it opened it. Okay, cool. There. 
This is only the second time I've flown this thing, so I'm really having tried everything. Yep, very nice. If I click on that, that's just door open, door closed. Okay. So that's operable. A lot of the planes you can't open and close the door, so I kind of like that. Very cool. Okay, thank you very much for joining me. Catch you next time. Flight Simmer 